Should you play Halls of Torment? Now this game has come out recently and it is clearly a vampire survivor clone. However, it has a few distinct differences which really step it out from the crowd. And one of these major differences is the aesthetic. It is very much inspired by Diablo 2, which is quite frankly a good aesthetic. However, this game uses fake pixel art. These are 3D models that have been taking pictures at certain angles and then de res to make it look like pixel art. So in the end, it just sort of looks grainy and without a lot of coolness to it, in my opinion anyway. However, you know, from a far back aesthetic where you're not really paying attention, it looks good as long as you don't pay attention to its obvious lack of real pixel art. This game also has a variety of different characters and they are as follows. We have the warrior, we have the ranger, we have the exterminator, we then have the cleric, the warlock, the paladin, and the sorcerer. Each of these characters have their own unique main skill which allow you to defeat enemies in the halls of torment. There are only three levels as of right now. I'm sure the developers are working hard to add more levels and it is very much needed because this game has what I call a bell curve of fun. When you first pick up the game, the game is not super addicting, not super fun. You're kind of going, why am I playing this game? However, for the very low price that this game is at, it is most certainly worth throwing a few dollars down the drain and enjoying this game over the weekend. It's quite good in that aspect. And then once you've gone through about three or four runs and you've unlocked all the levels and you've unlocked about five of the characters, it starts to click because it has a very good way of keeping you going in for the next run, the next run after that, and the next run after that. And that is the well mechanic. The well mechanic is where you find an item in the Halls of Torment. You take the item to the well and then you can then retrieve that item later at the home camp to then use in your next run. Or you can not put the item in the well and use it in the run that you're currently doing. This leads, of course, some risk because if you die while not having retrieved that item yet, you cannot buy that item back at camp. However, there's like one major problem of this, which is when we unlock potions. Now, potions are integral to this game, just as they are in Vampire Survivor, because they give you a reroll, a banish, a skip, and a save. Now, these are very good. There's also a double up potion, which doubles up the effect of a trait that you pick with that potion which makes it really powerful so if you find like a trait that's like five percent crit chance 30 percent damage it becomes 10 percent crit chance 60 percent crit damage which is ridiculously overpowered you can also get ones that are like plus one projectile becomes plus two projectile and when you're using a projectile class like an archer that becomes very effective and can spiral out of control making your character incredibly powerful these are really great mechanics however to get these bottles you have to collect them by sending them to the well to be treated later and you can only collect one item per run and you need to get like 20 potions you need to get over 40 items collected which means at minimum you're going to be playing this game for about 60 runs and each run can go up to half an hour before you get to the final boss and beat the boss not only this once you retrieve the item through the well you then have to pay the wellman to get that item out of the well which just adds a large gold sink which is good if you want to be playing this game for a long periods of time however you start to hit the end of that bell curve of fun. So you start the bell curve of fun, it's not super engaging, it's all right gameplay, you keep going because you want to keep playing. However, you then get to the top of the bell curve, you're having lots of fun, you want to collect these items, and then at the end of the bell curve you realize, oh, this game is just a go into the world, quickly get a potion, take it to the well, reset go into the world, quickly get the potion, reset. And then you do a couple of gold gaining runs where you're trying to get as much gold as possible, beat the run, hooray, you got lots of gold. But in the end, it's very slow going, which isn't super helpful. 
What is super helpful is the fact that each of these classes have a unique main ability and these also contain unique traits for each of these classes so you can use different sort of types of attack in the holes of torment which means each run has a unique feel to it. If you're playing the sorcerer class you shoot lightning out of your hands that chain lightnings out which makes you feel a little bit like unlimited power which is great because everyone loves unlimited power I mean I like unlimited power then you have the exterminator which is a flamethrower on the back which is really fast attacking really enjoyable but it sort of falls off pretty quickly once you start getting into the end of the dungeon runs because they have a lot of HP and yours is more about attack speed there's not a lot of traits in the game to like really make attack speed super effective outside of just getting more damage and more attack speed to make attack speed worthwhile but you get to the point where it doesn't quite feel usable next class we have is the warlock which is a summon class where you shoot out spirits ghosts demons and you send them into creatures in the attack what's cool about this summon class is it sort of links through enemies so if you line up your enemies just right it will run through a whole pack of enemies hitting them all dealing massive damage and massive clear however this class has a problem as it doesn't have multi shots so you can't like shoot out five ghosts from you going in all directions which makes you very vulnerable to enemies coming from behind then we have the swordsman who just has your basic cone swipe in front of him. It's really basic and doesn't really improve through traits. You can occasionally get some pretty high crits, but it's not super duper effective. We then have the cleric who is exactly like the swordsman, except for he has a wide cone with his attack. And every time he hits an enemy, it does a large amount of damage. But if he hits multiple enemies, it divides that damage amongst the enemies, which means he's really good when there's very few enemies on screen. But once the screen starts getting covered with enemies with lots of HP, this class falls off really fast. Now, I'm not going to talk about the archer right now. I'm going to talk about it a little bit later. We then have the cleric who has this sort of hammer and board attack where he does a cone hit with the shield bash and then does a hammer strike really close by. Now this class is actually quite enjoyable. It has a really good high damage on the hammer strike. The shield bash knocks enemies back. However, this class is very melee focused, which means you can't hit enemies that are the other side of the screen. You have to run up to them and hit them, which means you become very vulnerable to really high HP enemies, such as the uber bosses at the end of the game. You end up taking a lot of damage from these uber bosses and not really feeling the super rewarding gameplay that you would get with the archer now the archer is by far the best class in the game can beat any level super duper easy once you've gotten a few upgrades from the upgrade tree that gives you extra base damage and you have this ring which gives you plus 20 base damage you then want to stack lots of crit and then I'll use your double up potion on projectiles and crit and so you're always critting on every hit so every hit's doing about a thousand damage which is enough to kill most enemies throughout the whole game and even in the end game it two shots enemies at most three or four shots and then because of the way the archer works it's a shotgun sort of attack which means you can hit a target multiple times with the same attack now if we're going to have a more of a closer look at the archer gameplay at the start of the game we are moving quite slowly and we kind of need a little bit of a boost to our character so we're going to pick up a lot of move speed where we can and very quickly we want our main extra ability there's extra abilities in this game we can have up to six per run However, it's best to like keep it to two or three because you don't get a lot of scrolls of ability which give you these extra abilities. In a lot of cases, you start the run and there's one scroll next to your starting point and then there is another scroll somewhere in the level. However, in this level that we're currently doing, which is the final level and the hardest level, they are at two opposite ends of the map. And we want to quickly get to the two opposite ends of the maps before these ghosts kind of pull in. Here we're going to be using our potion to double up our projectiles at 1.5, I mean 0.15, which means that we get 
point three extra projectiles. Now we could have saved this and gotten a point three projectile boost later on in the game, but it is still very effective. Now these traits, we want to be boosting our attack speed, we want to be boosting our attack damage, and we want to be getting as much crit chance and crit damage as we can. And we want to be leveling up our Transfiction. Now Transfiction shoots another volley of blood knives out towards our enemies from our body, which is very effective, especially when we're doubling up with our own arrows that we're getting shot from our archery power. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit to when we have two of these scrolls stacked up nicely, nice and close. Now the reason why we're doing this and not collecting them straight away is because we want to level up our transfiction to level 5 or level 4. I'm not 100% sure when it happens and we can upgrade the transfiction to have an extra effect. Now this extra effect is to shoot transfiction behind the character. Now if we get another scroll and we're very lucky, we can get another transfiction effect that shoots a second volley behind the character. Now instead of it shooting directly behind it twice, it splits it off into thirds and shoots in a different arc. However, we didn't get that with that scroll. Unlucky. We choose Meteor instead, which is another one of these abilities. Meteor sends down a random media every now and then, dealing massive damage to whatever it hits. And it's good to get like bounce on this media, but it's not the best ability in the world. Now eventually we get our another scroll and we can then shoot our transfiction from three directions. Now at this point we could be very lazy and stand perfectly still and do absolutely nothing and it would pretty much auto win this run for us. But we want to be moving so that we can get more creatures on screen to get more experience faster and quicker, which is really useful. The other reason that we're trying to move around constantly is there are quests in this game and these quests arrange from complete and utter bullshit to absolutely easy some of these quests are deal 1 million damage with this ability and that's one of the quests for the media that we're seeing on screen right now and it is fairly easy to do however there's another quest for the media which is deal 3 million damage and that is just ridiculous especially doing one run so you're basically forced to pick media as your first skill and then use the ability increase damage gloves and not attack with your main skill at all so that the media sort of sucks up all the damage of the creatures around you otherwise you're not going to be able to get that quest done now you could say this is an interesting achievement because it makes you play the game differently in order to get this achievement but it's not exactly what you would call the most engaging gameplay now on screen we got some of these stone angels that are chasing us. They turn into a ghost when we're not looking at us and try to chase us down and hit us. But when we're looking at them they turn to stone. But however when they're stone they take very little damage. And when they're a ghost they take no damage whatsoever. It's a very weird mechanic but it is at least one of the cooler things in the game which is there is a large amount of enemy variety. We have enemies that encircle us and slowly encroach upon our territory. We have enemies that charge directly for us at high speeds. And we have enemies like these angels that want to attack us from behind while we're not looking at them. It's quite cool and engaging because each of these zones have their own set of mobs. Now we're going to skip forward quite a bit in this run because it's going to be pretty much the same for a long time and we're going to get to this boss section at the very end of the run where we're fighting a final boss. This happens at the end of every 30 minutes and we fight this final boss that shoots a very engaging fight at us. Now in Vampire Survivor the final fight at 30 minutes is just sort of a speeding reaper rushing to kill us which isn't exactly what i would call engaging or fun whereas in halls of torment it's an actual final boss so you feel really engaged and want to fight it and it doesn't matter how good your build is they have enough hp to make this fight last just long enough to see all their mechanics and not overstay their weapon and feel like a chore it is quite well designed and something that I wanted in Vampire Survivor for a long time. So seeing it here is a great addition to the Vampire Survivor sort of genre. 
instead of just having it end at 30 minutes, we have a boss fight that would potentially kill us quite quickly if we weren't prepared, but if we are prepared, it gives us a thrilling gameplay event. And it has, in this one, ghosts chasing at us, ghost knives stabbing at us, ghost tentacles coming out from the ground to grab us. It is really good. It also has some ghost hands, you know, like master hand going rawr, and it gives you really complex dodging mechanics so you're constantly paying attention to all of your surroundings as you kill this boss now after a long period of time we eventually kill this boss and that is when we beat the game and beat the game beat the level and we have this little crystal thing which is our escape back to camp now what i would love to have in this game is when we hit this crystal at the end all of our items in the bag that we have not retrieved go instantly into the well this, however, is not the case, so when we beat the game, we don't really get a delicious reward for beating the game. We just get a little bit of a gold reward, much like Vampire Survivor, and we feel like we have to just constantly do more runs. That is about the only downside I have for this game, as it feels like it wants to stretch out that content just a little bit too much, and it should just allow us to get to the end of the content without making it feel like a grind anyway hope you guys enjoyed this video i recommend halls of torment it's quite a good vampire survivor like game has lots of mechanics lots of fun and it is very affordable go ahead and buy it on steam today all right this is chris g'day good luck